in favor. to the point of being scarred, and now he lost both the child and the precious dog. I wonder how many of us are tamed and are Christ-like, Christian-like, and yet frequently that instinct in us returns that tells us you just aren't there yet. And in a way we express it, we go out to those who help us in our work of faith. And because what they relate to us pierces our hearts, we hit them back in return to the point to which we hurt them when in fact they intended to do good to us. Love in its deeper sense is really but love may seem sour when it brings pain our way in order that through that pain we may experience some good. Out of love, Paul is writing the people at Corinth and he is telling them you are fully blessed but you have also numerous problems, you have also difficulties among you, but he is the way to handle it, do it in the way of love. And there are some things that he says 
that are quite painful. They prick to the heart. But it is important that that be so for this reason. If you and I would want to plant some item, some seed, corn, flour, whatever, into a piece of ground, we may choose to put it on top of the ground. And it will quickly sprout because it has no depth, and then it will wither as fast as we put it on top of the ground. But if we break the ground and put the seed inside, the seed will be safeguarded there, but you also be able to sprout because we explore the nutrients, have depth, have strength, and have food, and so have growth. And necessity befits us at one occasion, the hard ground of our hearts needs to be broken to the point to which it may take seed in and begin to germinate. The world says love is blind, but God's love sees not some things, but all things. The world says if you love, you overlook wrong, but God's love says if you love, you address the wrong. And as we share together, let's ask ourselves, do we really want to buy into this love? Or we want it the way we picture it, as we enumerated in the course of last year? Let's find out. Love that's genuine, love that's true, love that's from God, does not want to hurt does not want to disappoint, does not want to offend, does not want to disturb, and yet quite often it does. Because what we understand to be love may not necessarily be love. Because according to God, love always always wears this thing called propriety. You put everything where it belongs. If you don't, then you're not doing what love is. Love says, kindness belongs there, patience belongs there, goodness belongs there, forgiving wrong belongs there, tolerance belongs there. You put everything where it belongs. If you miss that, you're not doing right. Uh, how can we wear this love? Well, if we listen carefully to Paul, we can wear it. Where does he begin? He begins by telling us we should exhibit love that is sin. Can love be sin? Yes, it can. In other words, don't just be noisy gongs because empty vessels make our own noise. But if they are full, they have no room to make money because they are full of substance. And so exhibit that attitude that shows you are full of substance, not just noisy. And that's why he says, if I have the gift of tongues, and I could speak in both tongues of men and of angels, and yet have no love, I'm just a noise maker. In other words, more than shout, we should shine with the goodness of God. Not just have the voice that speaks the goodness of God, we should have virtues that go with the goodness of God. We should not just have words, we should have works that speak the goodness of God. We are not just meant to go out there and kind of have principles empty of practice. But it is a message that we must carry, which must agree with our manners. We should have the heart not to grab, but actually to give. We should have the heart, the whole attitude 
of not just guarding our lives, but not but going on and giving off our lives for the sake of others. Not gossiping about others, but actually speaking good about others. Not being greedy, but rather giving. For love is not love until it gives. And are we that sort of people? And that's what Paul is telling us should happen with ourselves if we are going to demonstrate what genuine love is. And so let's look at the relationships we have and ask ourselves, will we be those that are full of substance or just noisy gums? Think of how much you mention God on our lips. And let's ask ourselves how much does us agree with how well we carry ourselves with that. But we're still dealing much more with the surface of it all. Let's go a little deeper. If it is visible, not just a voice, but the virtues of it, where do we find that? Well, that's why Paul leads us into the second thought. If love is true, not only is it sin, it sucks. Let me explain. He says, if I, I have the gift of prophecy, and if I can solve all mysteries, and if I have the gift of knowing all things, and the kind of faith that can move mountains, but if I have no love, he says, I'm still useless, I'm nothing. <clears throat> but how many of us, you know, have looked at the stars in our newspaper? My star is Scorpio, my star is that. Very good. What is my star saying today? We like that sort of thing. Someone who tells us a little bit of what lies ahead. And it gets into our systems. And sometimes we say, yeah, my star was predicted rightly today. I used to read a lot of that before I left high school. And uh, sometimes when it says today you'll be very attractive to the opposite sex. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> or just be careful today, somebody might injure you. Who will forget that? You want to look out and see what's going to happen, and so on and so forth. But let's face it, if somebody came through this, this to this woman and says, a toilet change places with the choir room, and suddenly it happens. Ah, uh, none of us will forget. What made you do that? Oh. If we were, walked into the hospital here, and uh, we know people are suffering, you know, <coughs> some almost invalids, and so on and so forth, and just a little touch, and this creeper just was. Everybody said, who did that? <laughs> we get excited with the surface substance and miss the depth of it. Every word Jesus uttered, every miracle Jesus performed, was tailored towards showing people that they could be helped out of their sin situation and their temporal life on earth into the right standing with God and eternal welfare. So that if it merely stopped at the outward show of things, it also have meant nothing. In other words, don't go out to enjoy yourself. Go out to meet with the living God. You know, the Eagles and I had a meeting in the course of last week, and one question we asked ourselves is, what makes us stick at Pastor United Baptist Church? The people say, they sing nicely. You, they preach you all day. This is they do. Is that what makes us stick? If it is, then it's the wrong thing. Psalm 27 4 tells us, One thing I've asked of the Lord, this is what I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze upon the beauty of the Lord and to see him in his temple. That's the focal point. But you see, from our human viewpoint, you see how much I'm doing for the church? The collection would suffer if I didn't put my money in there. So I want to be praised for that. I'm at the top of the choir. 
When we meet together to pray, the most sanctimonious prayers are mine. Go on and boast. And you're only pleasing yourself. Let me make it even simpler. Let's suppose somebody comes your way. Somebody who does everything you want. Exactly the way you want. And it just thrills your heart. And then you go to them, boy, thank you for being so good to me. You've been everything I want. And the person turns and says, I didn't do it for you. I just did it because I enjoy doing it. I don't know how much pleasure you'll have in what has been done. You're not the object, you're not the thought, you're not even in mind. The person just did it, but you're hard to please you. In my opinion, it's by far better if somebody sees me, looks at me, searches out my needs and addresses them because of me, not because they are enjoying it. And how much do we do out of pleasure, but not because we're thinking the Almighty or being steered by him, the apostle God says, I'm constrained, I'm moved, I'm shaped by love. The things that we do, the things that we say, that really go deep into human hearts, why do we do them? So the whole question of motive comes in. You know, we all have senses. Touch, hear, <coughs> sight, smell, and uh, what is the fifth one? So, uh, thank you. <laughs> <coughs> and that speaks the whole person. Yeah? And that's what Paul is telling us. Whatever makes us feel, know, experience something, that must come through to the point to which we want to exert it, not for personal enjoyment, but primarily for God and secondarily for others, and least of all, ourselves. We say something about that because of us, but how many of us do that? That which is sin, and that which sucks, makes us, penetrates us, and brings us to the point where says, this is arresting, this is attractive, leads us to the next stage, where it becomes love that in fact soothes. To soothe is to comfort, to bring to the place of satisfaction the point of fullness. And so now, when I have sensed, am I sensitive to the needs of others? When I have speeches to make, works to perform, is there something called spirit? Do I have words without the spirit of the word? Do I have truth without the passion of it? Or do I have mere sentiment? Sentiment is just feeling sorry for others and having a soft feeling for them. It doesn't matter whether or not they do, you just don't want to offend. Where am I? Notice what Paul says, if I give my body to be burned, if I surrender all I have and am, and yet have not love and nothing, what is he saying? We can say, as some people have said, I've been the one that has done everything for everyone. But because we've not received the appreciation, the recognition, the approbation, the praise, and so on, then it has hurt. I, I mean, let's face it, we need to encourage one another. And let's, let's face it, we need to give credit where it is due. But let's face it, if that becomes a focus, then we're not doing it out of love. Love quits. It places God there on the pedestal, not itself. And then others next. And finally, it places itself. Let me just give a test to all of us. Do I do everything? And do I do everything 
so that I may honor God? Do I do everything so that I may bless others? Do I do everything so that I may be a slave and servant of all? Do I? Alright, here am I. You say that is our minister. That is our pastor. He's just a few months old, you know. Let me ask you this. What do you expect of this minister? If you found me cursing in the street and just being careless with, would you probably want to that's my pastor? You know he's cursing. <laughs> But I want you to think, if your pastor is not to curse, are you? If he's meant to be an example, shouldn't you be the one who follows that example? I've been away from my wife over five years, and you married people know what that means. <laughs> If you, your minister then said, five years for my wife, no, no, that's too long. Let me entertain myself as a mistress. You know, a man can't stay away from uh, now. He must have some entertainment, something to keep him going. We said, yeah, my minister has found a mistress. What is waiting for his wife? Will you say that's your minister? That's not love. Distance, health, whatever puts couples apart is not reason for going out of your spouse's hand to seek another. It's not. And here I ask you, have you been faithful to your spouse? Or have you found reason to say, because this then you've wriggled out? Then you know nothing about that. We live in a society where at the age of 18, uh, people feel like now they're in the world. And see what we entertain. At the age of 18, our children can get out of our houses, find boyfriends and girlfriends and live together. They are 18 after all. Do you get that from the Bible? When you're 18, you have the liberty to just live the way you want. Doesn't that tell us so much about why there is so much divorce amongst us? What does an 18 year old know about lasting love? They're full of feelings. It may be genuine. But why not wait until you're mature enough? Because love is special. If you say, I want to have it and have it now, that's last, it's not love. And that's what we have by and large. <clears throat> I will go further. If we who call ourselves Christians do not expose the influence of God's love upon our life to the point to which we show a distinct difference between the world outside and ourselves, how then will the world outside know that our God has influenced us passionately? You see, when love is viewed for all, viewed for all its worth, it has a lasting impact upon a person's life. We, we all know the story of Jesus said there were 99. There were 99 that safely lay on the shelter of the fall. That one was out on the hills away, far off from the gates of gold, away on the mountains wild. Away from the tender shepherd's care. Away from the tender shepherd's care. Then go and say, Lord, you have here your 99. Are they not enough for you? But the shape of my brother, so this of mine, has wandered away from me. And although the Lord be rough and steep, I go to the desert to find my sheep. So all through the mountains, down the river, 
The master went and, where are your hands so rent and torn? They are pierced tonight by many a thorn. Until he comes back rejoicing. Rejoice angels, rejoice heaven, rejoice earth, I found my shield. After all that the master has gone through, can we sense that pastor to his love for us and yet begin and to think of living against his will? <coughs> Certainly not. And that's why little Emily reminded us, God shows us his own love in that while we are yet sinners, Christ died for the unborn. Do you want to be a God or do you want to be God? God's love says it's God. And so think of all the relationships that are sour, that are bitter, that just makes you sick. And do you go there and say, I'll remove that mountain because I want to go to the next person. Just when we are doing our studies, the Bible study, and then because one of our members said, you know, I used to have this thing against somebody, but then I prayed to God, and suddenly freedom came because it fell off when I sought God. You see, the emancipation, the freedom, came when this person met God. Has that been your Lord? Has that been here? That's what true love is. God coming in and feeling through us, speaking through us, and acting through us. As we relate to him, to others, and to ourselves. So first of all, we relate well with God. Then we relate well with others. Before we relate well with ourselves. And use everything else to think about how to better the lives of others. That is the expression of love. Do you have it? Do I? You know.